paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late night tour of the White House last year. My name is Nick Bryant, and welcome to the Nick Bryant Podcast. Three weeks ago, I unveiled a new lead in the Johnny Gosh case, but I had a quandary. Should I contact state or federal law enforcement? FBI agents covered up the Franklin scandal, and they also covered up the Johnny Gosh case, and local law enforcement took their cue from the FBI. Certainly not all FBI agents are dirty, but I felt if I went to the FBI, my new lead would intersect with the malignant corner of the FBI that covers up networks like the one that abducted Johnny Gosh and also Franklin and Epstein. Perplexed, I called a friend who's a psychologist and who's been an anti-trafficking activist for decades. She put me in touch with an individual who was the deputy chief of a police department in a city in Southern California and also on the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force. After he checked out my evidence, he saw that I had the goods. However, he reached out to law enforcement in New Mexico and quickly got nowhere. I have a few more options regarding law enforcement because it goes against my grain that a serial predator like Charles Couch escapes punishment for his crimes. Changing gears, last week I interviewed Epstein trafficking victim Juliet Bryant, and she told me a very macabre story about waking up on a table in a laboratory when she was at Epstein's New Mexico ranch. She surmised that the doctor and the people standing around her were harvesting her ovums, possibly for the purposes of cloning. The Boys from Brazil, a film about the infamous Dr. Joseph Mengele cloning Adolf Hitler's, came out in 1978. At the time, the film was considered sci-fi, but just 19 years after its release, Dolly the Sheep would be cloned. So we've had the capability of cloning mammals since the mid-1990s. The cloning process is relatively straightforward. DNA is taken out of an ovum, and the DNA to be cloned is inserted, and electricity starts the mitosis process. Before I interviewed Juliet, I had thought there, there has to be wealthy megalomaniacs running around this planet who have cloned themselves. It's estimated that the cost of cloning a human would be about $1.7 million. But I'm sure scientists in the third world countries would offer a blue light special. A few days after my interview with Juliet, I had dinner with a friend of mine. And I told him about my interview with Juliet and what she disclosed to me. And he said he knew someone who had their French bulldog cloned for around $50,000. Although I have nothing against the French, and I think bulldogs are cute in a prehistoric kind of way, I had always thought that being a French bulldog was perhaps the product of bad karma. But after my friend's disclosure, I think I may have been wrong about French bulldogs. If people are willing to spend $50,000 to clone them. In today's podcast, I'm again going to open the Franklin vault and play my 2002 interview with Elise Washington. I made my first Franklin-related sojourn to Nebraska in January of 2002. Although I talked to a number of people, only Father Robert Hupp, Paul Benassi, Rusty Nelson, and Noreen Gosh were willing to go on record with me. Upon my return to Nebraska in August of that year, I started looking for Larry King's victims, who are now young adults. I was particularly interested in interviewing Elise Washington because she had been the first of the victims to come forward. I eventually found Ulysses' grandmother, Opal Washington, whom I talked to for about 20 or 30 minutes. I told Opal of my intentions, and she seemed genuinely pleased that a journalist had taken an interest in the quote-unquote horrible things her granddaughters had endured. She said that she would contact Ulysses on my behalf, and I gave her my cell phone number. Ulysses phoned me about a couple of hours later. 
She was suspicious of my motives, but after we conversed for half an hour or so, I quelled her concerns and she invited me to her home. Ulysses' white split-level house was located in a western suburb of Omaha. Shortly after I knocked on the door, she greeted me and invited me into her home. She wore a denim shirt and blue jeans. Her complexion was unblemished and she had lucid bronze eyes. Ulysse was gracious, yet guarded, as she directed me to the living room sofa. Her living room was decorated with the trophies and ribbons that commemorated the many academic and athletic achievements of her four teenage children. We tried for maybe an hour when she consented to be interviewed. She then described the hell that she went through at the hands of Jarrett and Barbara Webb. I've since gotten together with Ulysse and her sisters on a number of occasions, and I'm absolutely amazed that they don't harbor any animosity towards the Webbs. But they're nonetheless perplexed that people can be so mean. I've written an article, The Inferno, that's behind the Patreon paywall, and it has links to social services documentation, Nebraska State Patrol reports, reports generated by the first Franklin Committee investigator, and also sealed grand jury testimony. This is uh, August 11th, uh, 2002, and uh, I'm interviewing um, Elise Washington about uh, the story I'm working on. So Elise, um, you first moved into the Webb household? When I was in third grade. Okay. And um, it was myself, Tasha, and Tracy. Tasha and Tracy are your sisters? Yes. Um, we went the first night we stayed. We were scared. Tracy and Tasha were crying. I put them in the bed with me. Mrs. Webb made them get out. I put them back in the bed. She made them get back out again. Um, she had a beautiful home. That was like in January or something, I think. It was a cold month when we got adopted. We went to Blair at the courthouse. And we got adopted and we were all dressed up. Then maybe, give or take, not long after that, Mr. Webb said I had a brick house. I thought it was kind of odd because I was a little girl and I was strange coming from a supposedly father. Um, well, I don't know. I haven't thought about this stuff in such a long time. Um, shall I just give you examples of our abuse? Sure. You know, like a period frame? Tasha, my baby, she had peed on herself. Miss Webb tied her to the door. At first she threw her in the tub. Then she tied her to the door. Then she beat her. And she left her there. All night. Later, earlier that morning, like about... Left, her, left her where? On the doorknob. Door she put her hand inside. She put her in... um the bed and didn't feed her for a week. I stole food out the refrigerator, cheese and bread and stuff, and snuck it to her. They would starve us, and we would, when we would eat, it would be just popcorn and a peanut butter sandwich. And we would clean off the table. We would clean off the tables and eat their scraps off their plates because we would be hungry. 
um, they beat us with this black strap that was put between the metal of the train. It was two of them. One was a one that was a two, a big heavy rubber tube that had an opening, and the other one was a solid strap, black rubber in the middle that was solid, and then on the ends it was two flat, like pieces with two or three holes in them. They beat us all the time. I would take a lot of abuse so they wouldn't have to get beat, Tracy and Tasha. We were with the um, horse loops before. I want to say Mr. Webb started sexually molesting me when I was in fourth grade. It could have been later on in third grade year. It was more of advances. He would, um, the victim. I know. How did you meet Larry Kane? He was Miss Webb's cousin. He was our Uncle Larry. And um, did you go, you, you went to like Christmas parties there? Christmas parties, things, all kind of parties. Very nice parties. And did you see him abusing children? No. No? Not that I can say him exactly. Mm-hmm. When he took you on these flights, how, how many times did you? Twice. Twice? Chicago? Twice. Did you go to New York with him? Yes. So Chicago and New York? Yes. And, and that's it? And what, what happened at these, when you would go with him? Throughout the day, pretty much, I was by myself. Then later in the evening, you know, I was told to go put on this little gown thing. And um, it was a party. There was no women there. It was all men and young boys. And you, where did the boys come from? We took some boys with us. And did, did the boys, were, a lot, were those boys from Boys Town? He often got all his boys from Boys Town to help do stuff and do all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you flew to Chicago and New York, you, kn you knew that those boys were from Boys Town? Yes. Did they say that they were from Boys Town? Or? Yes, that I can recall. And he said it too. I mean, it was a known fact. Because all the boys I worked for him, he pretty much got from Boys Town, but they came from broken homes. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean they worked for him? They 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 were servers at the party. Um, they accompanied him everywhere. Like on the planes. They were on the planes. Mm -hmm. The two that I was on. How many Boys Town kids do you think were? on those trips? Twelve. Twelve? Twelve, seventeen. Eight. A number of them? Yes. Can you remember any of their names at all? Honestly, right now, just to say this name, I can't. Mm -hmm. I read what I said, the names, but I don't remember those names anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and did these boys know that they were being used for sex? I mean, that, was that was that the idea? Did they was that talked about at all? Or? Okay. You observed and watched the fly, and the boys knew that it didn't bother them because they were being taken care of with clothes and money and access to cars. So these parties that you uh, went to, um, what 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 would happen at these parties? Um. I think that me personally, when they first came in, they had they just didn't get in. When they came in or whatever, a few of the boys, they let them in, took something from them. You know, the men, I believe, selected the boys. They left out with them. There was one occasion, though, that I saw. I never saw them actually, you know, do anything, mm -hmm. grab their behind. I might have kissed them. They masturbated in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, but you never saw, like, boys um, and men having sex oh. at, at the parties? No. The men always took the boys? Yes. Um, other politicians that you can think of that were? I don't know. I was young. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They were all had money. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to ask questions. We already knew not to ask any questions. We just do what we're told to do. Mm -hmm. If we asked too many questions, we would get beat. Mm -hmm. So we just followed the, the road. And uh, did Larry ever talk to you about boys? No. He loves boys, though. Loves boys as in? He loves them. He loves them like he shouldn't love them. Mm -hmm. It and was obvious. Did you see him? Ever having sex with kids from Boys Town? No. No? How, how did these kids from Boys Town, how did, wh what did they say about how they got out of Boys Town? Did, did you ever talk about that? We really weren't allowed to talk to each other on that level. When we would talk, it would be like secrecy. You know, little bits and pieces here. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was some kind of program that they were allowed to, you know, work and do a service. But not a, a bad service, but that's what it was. Mm -hmm. But if I was to go to a group home and get some kids and, like, you know, this is the person, we'll pay them a salary or take care of them or whatever. They need to do little odds and ends and like this, and that's how it seemed with him. Mm -hmm. Like it was a contract or something that he had these boys, because he always had boys. From Boys Town? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many people would accompany Larry on these trips that you were on? Well, we would leave. Me, him, the kids. How many, how many kids? 10 to 12, 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. And most of them were generally from Boys Town? They were generally from Boys Town. They were boys. Mm -hmm. I was the only girl. So 10 to 15 boys would accompany Larry on these trips. Would there be like uh, security people too? There were security people at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And what were these? What were these parties like? Um, I 
like the sleazy part. They they were elegant parties that I want to say because you know you had champagne and stuff that they were eating or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they'd be drunk. Were there drugs? say that there were drugs and I can't say there weren't drugs. Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing them mm -hmm. doing any drugs. Mm -hmm. So at these parties you had all these boys and then and then older men would come in? Like Yeah, it was all older men. It was older men. They were wealthy. Or how they looked they were dressed very nicely. Um, they were drunk. They would leave with the boys. And did you know anything about these men other than that they were wealthy? That they were Republicans. Yeah? They were Republicans. Did, did Larry tell you that they were Republicans? Or? Yep, that's all he said he dealt with was Republicans. Cause Democrats, he was very down on Democrats. Mm -hmm. Why was he down Democrats? He said they were ignorant. They didn't have any reason for anything. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he liked the power that he had and the influence. He just loved it. It's all he ever talked about. Was was the power that he had? Yeah. He was a showboat, you know? Mm -hmm flashy type of person. Mm -hmm. He has this, he has that, you know, the diamonds, the furs, the, you know, the cars, the houses. And he was a flashy person. Mm -hmm. You know, at these parties, uh, were people at the door? Yeah. You couldn't just come in the room, the hotel, every two people at the door to let you in. They had to know you before you got in. Mm -hmm. And did you see Larry, them, these wealthy guys give Larry money or? Yeah. I saw quite a few of them pass my money got from their hands to his hands mm -hmm. that I did see. Mm -hmm. So money was exchanged. Yes, money was definitely exchanged. And uh, and then these guys would leave with the kids? Yeah. But we had the kids back with us the next day. But they'd be in the rooms. I was in by myself. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you think that they, uh, that these older men and these younger boys probably had sex in the hotel? I honestly believe that they did. Yeah. Just watching what transpired and how it went down. Mm -hmm. I was a kid, but I've seen movies and I've watched stuff, and it wasn't right mm -hmm. for them to be leaving with them. And they were intoxicated too. Mm -hmm. It and was like they were. And and they how were doing a service. How old were these kids, General? Um, twelve to eighteen. How old? Maybe. 12 to 18, 11 to 18. 11 to 18. So then some of them had to have been at Boys Town. Yeah. Staying at Boys Town. If they were like 11 years old. 12, 13. Or were we allowed to talk a lot? What, what would happen if you talked too much? We'd get a beating. And who, who would give you the beating? I would get beat from Ms. Webb or Mr. Webb. So Wally, I don't know about the other boys, but it was just like, it was a chain, it was a chain reaction. Everything fell into play. Everybody knew what to do pretty much all the time. We didn't talk out of order. We didn't, you never would have thought there was kids around at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it was like that, but we just knew. I think. For, we need to be hurt. 
We just knew it was wrong, but it was like a code that it wasn't discussed. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And did so? Did you ever get a chance to talk with any of these boys? Can you remember any conversations that you might have had with them? Um, one of them. Um, for him because he was taken care of and he had clothes and got to drive a car and kept money in his pocket. It didn't bother him at all. He was always with him too. I don't remember his name. Mm -hmm. But it didn't bother him. And he said he had sexual intercourse with other men. With men that Larry King introduced to him? Yeah, Larry King set it all up. From my knowledge and what I saw and how stuff went down, he was the man that got the stuff moving and rolling. Everything went through him like, you know, we had a sheltered life. We didn't go, we didn't go other places. We weren't able to go to the store by ourselves or the school and in the house in church. We weren't allowed to, we were always with one of the webs or the children. Or if it was with Larry, you know, we were always, it wasn't like regular kids. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't like such. We were, it was crazy. When the webs, how, how did that happen? They just told you that you had to go with Larry King on these trips? They sure did. And they if, said I had to go. I was going. It wasn't like, do you want to go? You're going out of town for the weekend or whatever, and you'll be back and do what you're supposed to do. Um, what, would, what would have happened if you wouldn't have gone? I would have, I wouldn't have gone. That was not even a, a choice. I couldn't tell them I wasn't going. Mm -hmm. I would have gotten beaten. We didn't have choices. We did what we were told to do. Mm -hmm. Barbara Webb was Larry King's cousin. Mm -hmm. Mr. Webb was her husband. When he went on when you went to, uh, was it a, a private plane, a chartered plane, or was it like a regular plane? No, it was the wrong plane. So you, you chartered the plane? Yeah. And you said there would generally be? 12, 15, maybe a little bit, 8 to 10. 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. All together. And uh, did Jared, he, did he, he sexually abused you? Did he sexually also sexually abuse your sisters? No. He just sexually abused me. I did whatever he wanted to, me to do. So he would mess with my sisters. And he said if I didn't, they'd be put into a, a mental home. Mm -hmm. Tracy and Tasha, and I believed it because Tasha was a heroin addict baby, mm -hmm. and she wasn't slow. She was slow developing in some things that she did, but she's very bright. Mm -hmm. And um, Tracy had a few learning difficulties in school, and I believed her. That wasn't even a choice. It wouldn't even be a of him saying, I'm not going to do it. He know he would have got beaten. He would have got tore up. By, by Larry King or? No, by Mr. and Mrs. Webb. Did you ever see Larry King abuse any children? No. No? So everybody would be well behaved with him? Very well behaved. 
Um, we were always compliment, complimented on our etiquette and our manners. With the with the trips, was it was it generally um, white men or black men or older men or? It's white men. Yeah. And were these kids? Were they white or white or black? They were black. Mm -hmm. The majority of the children were black. What majority of kids from Boys Town? Yeah, I don't even really remember seeing any Caucasians or any. It might have been one or two, but right now, I don't. They were all black children. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there was other ones because maybe there was a the war, but the whole overall boys were black. Mm -hmm. And when you would get off the plane, you would get picked up in, like in a limousine or take a cab or? No, we got picked up in a limousine to get to the hotel. Mm -hmm. And then how would the party start? What would, what would go on at the parties? How? Well, the food and little champagne and stuff would already be there. Mm -hmm. And um, it had to start after meetings or whatever because I would be there, you know, during the day. What, what kind of meetings? I don't know, business meetings. Mm -hmm. Political stuff, I would, I think. Political stuff. And then they would, um, we would, um, Larry would come first. Who, who would come first? Larry. Yeah. And, um, he had to put this down on, but he let the men know when, as they were coming in. Did he have you put a gown on? Yeah. Like the, the men the, couldn't touch me. I mean, they didn't, they didn't touch me at all. Was it like a negligee or? Yeah, like a little nighty, a sexy nighty or something. Mm -hmm. Short. And what would you do there? Just sit. And then you would watch the men what would the men do with the boys? Conversating. I saw them fill their butt, kiss them, rub their hair, and leave with them. Mm -hmm. When the boys would leave with the men? Yeah. Now, they would be on the plane the next day? Yeah, we all would leave. I mean, when we left, it would be the next day, I don't believe. But we all left at the same time. Mm -hmm. When you went to that one party, you, you said that there were men masturbating in front of you? Yeah. Like, were they like these white, rich guys? They were like white, rich guys that were drunk, that were looking at me and getting off. And what did Larry... They couldn't King, touch me. And did Larry King say anything to them, or was he there, or...? Yeah, he was there. No, he didn't say anything to them. They, had to, they did whatever they wanted. It was... It was okay. Nobody didn't say, like, nothing was out of place. Like, it was wrong. It was just... It was sick. How, how long would these parties, like, last? They would start like in the evening, and maybe, you know, 11, 12, 1 o'clock, they'd be over. Mm -hmm. It'd be in the evening, though. Would all the boys be taken? Yeah, pretty much all of them would be. I mean, or they, it dwindled down to... So pretty much all the boys would be taken? Yeah. And then you would just get together and take a limo to the to the airport? 
When we left, yeah. go back, yeah. All the all the boys together again. Pretty much, yeah.